I don't want to go into details, but I made a joke when a client introduced a new team member to us. I thought to be funny, yet my boss wants me to apologize. Thanks Sebastian for submitting this question and yes I understand there is a very fine line between funny and offensive and navigating it can be challenging. However, in your case you need to take action and therefore I will be sharing 10 short yet impactful tips on how to protect your reputation by apologizing the right way. Hi, my name is Sylvia Di Giusto and my passion is helping professionals around the world to make a greater impact. Whether that manifests in being a better leader or finding more success in your industry, a huge part of this lies in the first and lasting impressions you leave behind. And for those who are watching on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button and look out for the tiny bell to be notified about new content. And regardless how you have found me, let's keep in touch. Also, be sure to stick around until the end of this video to learn how you can get your questions answered and how to receive one year of weekly free tips and tricks sent straight to your inbox. Now, back to Sebastian's question. However, before I answer, I first want you to know that everybody Everybody, including myself, makes a wrong impression every once in a while. It's only human. And saying sorry for what we did wrong isn't actually the issue. In fact, we say sorry quite often for leaving behind a coffee cup at the printer station, for sending out those emails too late, for not being on time at the team meeting, for stepping on someone's toes. Things are a little bit different though if we step on someone's personal feelings in a professional setting. If someone else feels irritated or even offended by something wacky, not well thought out or even offensive we said or did. So how do you handle that? And how shouldn't you handle it? Because there are usually two mistakes happening. One. You don't feel like you are responsible for how others feel and therefore simply ignore it and move on. If this is how you decide to handle the situation, you are losing control over the case and therefore also the outcome. You don't know if they will move on too, forget about it, forgive you, carry on or share with others how you supposedly made them feel. Remember, your image is not what people tell you to your face. It's actually what they say about you behind your back. And if you don't control your image, others will control it for you. Not offering an apology can damage your relationships at work, limit your career opportunities, and it even can affect your entire team. The tension of you don't feeling this requires an apology and others thinking that you don't own your mistakes will create a toxic work environment. The second mistake often made, in particular if you don't feel like you are 100% responsible for what happened. You simply blurt out a quick sorry, while the other party might think they deserve a more genuine apology, which makes them dislike or distrust you even more, as you obviously haven't taken the issue seriously enough. So instead, if you feel like you need to take serious action, and initiative to mend the impact made by your impression. Here are 10 tips that will help you along the way. First, and this might sound trivial, however, it's a very important step. Forgive yourself. We all make mistakes and we all have off days. You can only try to do your best every day. However, the way you go about making things right and growing from your faults and learnings says more about you as a person and a professional than your original mistake. Second, once you have let go of the self-judgment that is holding you back, do your homework. 
analyze the situation that you found yourself in and understand how the other party involved may feel. Ask yourself some tough questions about what exactly happened, the consequences and how it could have gone better. This can help lead you through understanding the details of what went wrong in the encounter. And it will also help you phrase an apology that goes far beyond a simple sorry. Third, now that you are clear on the mistakes you made, plan when to apologize. The timing is crucial. For minor mistakes, for example, such as being too late to a meeting, an apology is expected and accepted quickly. However, when apologizing for a particularly huge mistake, you might need to wait a few hours or even a day until emotions calmed down and everyone involved is ready to process the situation and accept an apology. Fourth, when planning, keep in mind that this conversation should happen privately. A one-to-one -one conversation. Things are more complicated if your apology has anything to do with a sexual misconduct, alcohol or drug abuse, religious or other sensitive topics. If this is the case, I encourage you to immediately skip this video and seek help from your HR department or legal counsel. But other than that, always seek a private conversation with the person you need to apologize to. In a second step, you can still invite your boss or anyone else involved and share, possibly together with the person impacted, that you worked things out. Number five, try to apologize in person. A conversation from eye to eye is always better than communication via text message, via email, via chat, or even via a call. If possible, allow the other person to hear your voice, to see your facial expressions, and vice versa. If you quickly type that you are sorry for what happened, you can't see their reaction either. You hit send and lose control over the process, as nothing might happen. If an in-person apology is not possible, a FaceTime, Skype, Zoom, WebEx session or any virtual meeting room is probably your next best bet. That being said, as others see you in person or via webcam, be careful with your non-verbal cues, crossing your arms, negative and cold, avoiding eye contact, distant and suspicious, smiling too much. Don't you take this seriously? Six, say it out loud, I am sorry. And it will only sound authentic and real to others if you actually mean it. Because the important point here is to actually be sorry. Express your regret around the situation with honesty and humility. This is the first step to gaining back trust and accepting forgiveness. That being said, claim the blame. Say, I realize I made a mistake or I understand you were hurt. Own the mistakes you made and take responsibility for your actions. Also, don't shift part of the blame onto someone or something else in an attempt to reduce responsibility. And it is very important not to get defensive and make excuses at this point. It's also risky here to over-explain your actions because by trying to explain why you thought your behavior actually was right, you are missing the point and make others think you still don't get it. Simply admit what went wrong. It will show those around you that you do not operate from your ego. Next. This will cue you up for the next step to share what you have learned and how your actions will be different going forward. Offer to resolve the issue or to fix the mistake. If you can't fix it this time because what's done is done, then explain how you will avoid this from happening again in the future. But be sure that you are able to follow through on what you say you are going to do and what you promise. And to really never repeat that false behavior. People are usually very forgiving once. It will be harder for you to recover if you make the same or even a similar mistake again. 8. Now that you have and said your part, sip up and listen. 
Take in what others might have to say in response to your apology. Again, resist getting defensive and justifying your behavior to their response as they have the right to express their disappointment, their feelings or their point of view of the situation. Number nine, to close the conversation and frankly to move on. Thank the other person. Don't make it over dramatic here. Simply say thank you for the chance to address this and discuss this and then move on. Otherwise, you risk that you will discuss the same and same and same issue and reasoning behind it again and again and again, which will manifest it in their brain and yours even more. Last but not least, maybe the hardest step for many, patience. Regaining the trust of others takes patience, perseverance and most of all, time. It is unreasonable to expect others to immediately regain trust in you. Allow them the time they need, or you risk undermining the process. And finally, you must let go of the experience at a certain point. This encounter does not define you and often will linger in your thoughts longer than it stays with others. Learn from your mistakes, but do not allow them to consume you. If this video of how you can go from wrong to trustworthy based on your amended impression was helpful for you, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. And for more tips, facts and figures around making your best first impression, sign up for my 52 weeks of free truth drops. I will leave you a link. Together we can make sure you are putting your best foot forward every time even after making a mistake, as we all do. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.